the 1970s Chevrolet Camaro Coupe. Coming up next on Monster Hobby's Model Car Garage. Hello once again Corvette lovers and model car fans all around the world. Welcome back to another amazing unboxing video where today I am going to show you what's inside this great AMT Ertl 1970 Chevrolet Corvette Coupe box. Now this is one of those cars that came out in the times when AMT Ertl was going good in the 1990s, early 2000s. So expect to see a lot of awesome detail and precision model building. Now, I'm going to ask you to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell because there's going to be more of these videos coming up in the future. And I don't want you to miss them out. So, without further ado, everyone, let's go down to our GM showroom and take a look inside this great model kit. And now we roll the clock all the way back to 1970 as we step our feet into the Corvette showroom where we get to check out the Corvette Coupe. Now this, of course, is a special edition Corvette series from the 50th anniversary. And at one time I wanted to try to build all cars in that 50th anniversary series. So um, some of these, of course, you're going to have to, if you're doing that, you're going to have to uh, cut and swipe parts around because, for example, there's no 73 Corvette on the market, at least that I know of. Anyway, here we have our 1970 Corvette Coupe. And if we turn our box up on the side, you can see the great artwork for the 50th anniversary series. We've got a 53 Corvette in here. Actually, this is one of the showroom ones that they didn't release. If you look at the sides carefully, you know your Corvettes. Then we have our split window 63, and then one from the mid 70s, the 90s, and then I do believe the 2003, which would have been the most recent at the time. Of course, 50th, 1953 to 2003. And there's the side of our box. And then on here, we have some pictures of the interior, the engine, and the side profile. Skill level 2 kit for ages 10 and up. You will need your own glue and your own paint because, hey, there's none in the box. This kit came out in 2002 under RC Ertl, but this Corvette model kit was built by the original AMT crew that were trying to make models that would compete with Ravel and Tamiya Japan for detail, quality, and ease of construction. I know that because this thing is amazing. Actually, I have some from earlier years when they first came out in the 90s. So again, we got to thank that great team for making an awesome kit, as you will see. So, bought at Phoenix Comics June 22nd, 2003 for $16. Our instruction sheet is quite a big one, lots of fold out. So again, one of those AMT maps. Now, I have done a little bit of work on the body in here, I will admit but that's just getting rid of seam lines and making it look pretty. Now, the 70 Corvette was quite a new one. It has the A crate grills in the side, which was from 70 to 72 before they changed the body for the 73 model year. But again, a nice, nicely detailed body. Looks like I've been cutting some parts out. There's our interior tub. It's amazing that it has a tub in there. <clears throat> the under chassis. Very typical of the Corvette. There's our hood. Looks really nice. This, of course, is a top that came with the kit for the convertible. So AMT saves some money on the uh, runners. Then we got our dashboard and interior components. And then here's all the underneath details and suspension bits and pieces. The goodies that make it roll, and here's the goodies that make it go. <laughs> Engine components and rear axle. Our decal sheet is just kind of slapped in the bottom here. I think AMT would have had a little better way of doing it. But of course I was building this kit. There's our exhaust pipes. i got to finish these models one day. i got to be like Hi Pie Guy and build it all in one video. But I tried that with that... Um, the trailer and I found that to be pretty challenging for me to try to crank out a model in a week so I want to take a little more time on these so one day look for my series of me actually building all this stuff there's our chrome yeah there's a the cover for the decals 
tires. Because when you get tired, you get tires. I don't know. <laughs> uh, there's a, another custom roof for the convertible. That would be the hard top. Again, saving some money on sprue runners. There's our glass, thankfully in a plastic bag. And we have three rear windows, again for those funny tops. And then what else is in here? Oh, the underpan for the front of the car. And then we get this nice little 50th anniversary collection stuff. Look for these other anniversary releases. Of course, now you're going to eBay. But at one point in time, these would be coming out fresh. 61 Corvette, 63, 54, 68, uh, 53, 84, and 62. Those are 118 scale die casts. So I do believe the plastic kits are on the back here. Let's see, 118, 164th. What's the other 25th scales? Uh, 64th, hot wheel size. So here we have for the 125th scale in the series, you've got a 53 Corvette, 63, a 72 Corvette convertible, 75 Corvette coupe, a 96 Corvette Grand Sport, 98 Corvette convertible, 55 Corvette. That one has a V8 in it. The 62, the 70, which is this one, the 94 Corvette Convertible, 95 Corvette ZR1, 57 Corvette Convertible, 71 Corvette, which we'll be looking at later. I actually see they got the 70, 71, and 72, so look for those coming up. 94 Corvette Convertible ZR1, 96 Corvette Convertible, and the 97 Corvette Coupe. And then, of course, they show you some images of all the different Corvettes that are up in the series all over the place different series. So there you go, 50th anniversary. We'll clear this away, take a look at our instruction sheet coming up next. And now we'll take a look at our Corvette instruction sheet. And it wasn't noted on the box, but here it is here. This is a 1970 Corvette LT1 ZR1. And I do believe the LT1 is the 350 cubic inch motor. Um, but let's actually open this up and see what it says down here. Now, this is a lot of reading, so I'm just going to kind of zip through it a bit here. Uh, okay, let's see what this thing has in it. High performance, small block Chevrolet Corvette motor. Basically, the ZR1 package was intended for off-road competition. Uh, okay, approximately 25 Corvette ZR1s were produced in 1970, 8 in 71, and 20 in 72. Basically, the ZR1 package consisted of the LT1 370 horsepower, 350 cubic inch, small block, turbo fire V8, F41 special purpose suspension, G81 turbo fire V8, F41 special purpose suspension, G81 posi traction axle, J56 special brake booster, and the M22 close ratio four speed heavy duty transmission, the proverbial rock crusher. Uh, okay, and then it goes on and on and on and on and on blah, blah, blah. blah. <laughs> All right, you guys can get one of these and spend the next 30 minutes reading it. But as for the rest of us, we shall move on. Important, test fit all your parts and components. Look at these images and remember what they're talking about. Use a hobby knife, use your tweezers, and smint it. But don't smint your fingers together with crazy glue. Instead, we recommend the use of liquid polystyrene smint. Okay, anyway. And building tips for the advanced modeler, which basically means, you know, wet sand the thing and uh, how to paint your two tones and all the rest of that jazz. So this again is one of those gigantic, we zoom out, full panel super maps from AMT. So let's look at this thing one panel at a time. And here we have panel one, which shows the first half of our basic 350 Chevy going together. So we have our intake manifold here, Chevy engine red. It's nice that they have the call-outs on the paint. Our engine is two halves, which go together, which does have the uh, standard manual shift transmission molded in place. So far, so good. The Chevy exhaust manifolds. This is almost the same kind of Chevy 289 type motor that uh, would have been in earlier Corvettes and whatnot. Sort of even the 56 Chevy. So there's the front water pump cover going on here. Even 55 Chevy, I guess. Anyway, uh, sliding the panel across, we have panel number two showing you the rest of the 350 going on. We've got our paper element air cleaner, our carburetor, the distributor, and our coil going on here. 
This is the ignition shield because, of course, these were all fiberglass cars and the only grounding source was the frame. So they needed this ignition shield in here to help with grounding of the distributor and all kinds of other things. We've got our starter motor going on here, the alternator, and you do have an air conditioner in here. There's the air pump, the extra pulleys. Now, if you don't want this in here, you can always cut this pulley off here and here and kind of dig it. Well, I don't think you need to dig it out of there. But uh, still, you can cut all this off if you want. But nah, whatever. Let's have the air conditioner because in California it gets hot. <laughs> okay, and then there's our fan. Same in Alberta, it gets really hot in the summer. Now let's see what's happening in panel three. In panel three, we put on our rear axle, start assembling it all up. Now this is, of course, the free-floating axle that we first saw in the 1963 Corvette. This is much designed like the Jaguar-type rear suspension. So you've got these uh, little tiny drive shafts going off of the differential here. Other oh, no, they're not drive shafts, uh, but anyway, they go off into the disc brakes in the back. Then we've got our struts in here, the shock absorbers, and the differential going in there. A fully independent rear axle, and then this will drop onto our nicely detailed chassis here. Panel 4 gets our front suspension going with the lower front suspension uh, component. There's our tie rods here. And then here we have our front um, uh, stabilizer bar. The spring's going in, and then the upright king pins. Now it's interesting, there should be an ax plastic axle pins that pop in here, but maybe we'll see what happens with our wheels. Note, front wheels may be assembled to the uprights at this time. See step 10. Okay, so there's our A-arms popping in from this side. So you can see the amount of nice detail that they put into this front suspension from the guys at AMT. And here we go with the continuation of our chassis. So we have our inner wheel wells, which are molded separate, much like that uh, Johan Cadillac that we reviewed, the 70, the Eldorado. The radiator expansion tank will pop in the sides. The engine drops in here with the drive shaft to the differential onto our subassembled chassis. We've got our radiator and our fan shroud going together and then dropping in place, hooked together with the upper radiator hose. So again, very nice work here by AMT. And here we have the frame cross member with our exhaust pipes going in here with the mufflers at the back, all dropping in underneath. And this chassis assembly actually reminds me of the uh, Ravel 1969 Corvette. Panel 7 shows our stock interior coming together, and here we have our dashboard, and these ones had the pockets for your map inside, the steering column, there are some decals for the LT1 version, which will go on here, uh, the shifter, steering wheel, we'll take a look at those once we get there, um, the seat bucket seats front and back, and again an interior tub. It says, see color combination chart to match interior, exterior colors, step 13. It's at the very end. So you got to go to the end to see where you are in step 7. Step 8 shows our assembled interior being dropped into the body. But first, remember to put in your clear windows. And there's the rear view mirror going in place. Now, this is uh, new windows, as you can tell. It doesn't have the big runners going in between, as a kit made in the 70s might have. There's a firewall, and our master cylinder, and the power brake booster. So, a three-piece there. And on this side, we have the wiper vacuum can going on. It looks like a little bullet thing with a spring in it. So, pretty interesting. And all this goes together, and it says paint hood, body, and front pan before assembly. See interior-exterior color combination chart for color selection. Panel 9 shows the assembled or sub-assembled body being dropped onto the assembled chassis. Once that happens, you can glue your lower front pan in here and pop your hood in. Now, uh, I know with the uh, Ravel Corvettes, you actually have to have your hood in place first before putting it in because in here, I guess the AMT is doing the same thing, There, it's hooked on those inner fender aprons, so these little bars will fit into the hooks and lock the hood in place. It says here to tape hood to body, remove tape after assembly. 
That'd be interesting. Carefully spread body sides apart, insert chassis front end first, and bow the back end into position. So you've got to kind of do this into it and pop it back in place. Now panel 10 shows our wheels going in place. So there, you do get a choice of wheels here. You get these uh, sort of steel wheel kind of things going on for the ZR1 version of the Corvette. Or if you want the LT1 version, you use the, I guess they're sort of Camaro style wheels, which should pop in here. And then there's our Goodyear Polyglass GT tire and the front inner wheel with this little pin that pops through. And unfortunately, instead of coming from the back into the wheel, this one goes from the wheel out. And those are usually the ones where when you're trying to put a little glue on here, this pin slips back just a little bit, touches inside there, and then your wheel locks. Um, anyway, it says carefully remove the tire centers. Now, if you want some different type of spoke wheels in here, check out the AMT 1970 Chevy Impala, which I reviewed last time around. You should be able to find it up here. Maybe I'll leave a link up in here. And uh, yeah, use those wheels and then you'll get that neat wire wheel that they had back in 70. Now moving across we have panel 11 and this is where we're going to put our chrome into the car. So here we have our front and grille and bumper which will pop in place. Our wheels and tires will go on and then you get an antenna here for the LT1 version and an outside mirror which will pop on the side here. And here we have the end detail of the 70 Chevy Corvette. Now the 70, 71, and 72 are all the same Corvette, basically. Just had some different engine options and whatnot, but exterior-wise, they're all identical. Uh, this was the first year that they used the square exhaust tips. Prior to this, they were circular, so 68 and 69. And then here we have the chrome rear bumpers and our four tail lights. The center ones should have white inside them, I do believe. Or maybe it was the outside, so I'll have to take a look at that again. Uh, Corvette written across the back of the rear panel. Finally, we get into our decal placement, which is very straightforward. There is the LT1 stripe that goes across on the front of the hood here. And then we have our decal number three going on the air cleaner, which would say 350 or LT1 or something like that. And then our front license plate, which will pop on here. We'll figure out what these are at the end of the video. And here is our interior exterior color codes. So for example, if you have Le Mans Bleu, code is 976. So you could actually look these up at a GM paint part chip thing. And then there's our interior, black 400, blue 411, Brown 414, green 422, red 407, and saddle 418. So the Le Mans Blue only had a black or a blue interior. Um, but this one here, what is this? Donnie Book. Uh, no, uh, Laguna Gray. Looks like it had every interior option available to it. And of course, there's Classic White, which has every color in as well. Now, the original Corvettes were white. Polo white with a red interior, and that's the way I'm trying to paint all these 50th anniversary Corvettes, every one being white with a red interior, to match the original 53. Now I have built one of these in the past, so we'll see it at the end of the video. And that concludes our look at the 70 Corvette LT1 ZR1 instruction sheet. And now I'll just move this out of the way so that we can take a look at our grey plastic components. Here we have our body components that came with the kit. Now these two roofs are not actually used in the kit, but they are included in the box. So as you can see here, we have our nice Corvette body and our hood. Now that little panel that goes underneath, I've already glued it in place on this one. So this would actually be separate and there'd just be a gap. Uh, but as you can tell, this is a nice 1970 to 72 Corvette with the egg crate grills in the side here, the Stingray molded script just above those, side marker light details. Now there were seam lines that ran up in here, which I've sanded off. This of course has the door handles and the lock up here. There's that panel there. So the hood has not yet come right up to the windshield on the Corvette. 
and won't until I do believe 73 is the first year of the extended long hood. Corvette script up top and our sunken headlights which of course flip up on the real car. And across the back panel you can see we've got the Corvette letters as well as the license plate frame and our holes for our tail lights and for the rear bumpers. And on the deck lid here there's our Chevy emblem on top of the gas tank cover, out <laughs> of the gas cap, and then little vents in the back here. So looks quite nice, like the real thing. There's our hood with the proper scoop in it. Underneath, nice padding in here. I think there were some mold marks that I scraped out. And this should just slot up here. Whoops. It's a fairly decent fit. Just like that. Uh, anyway. Okay, and then we've got the convertible hood, or top, I mean. There's four mold marks underneath. A sunken area for the glass to fit in, which is a nice feature. Gets the glass up flush with the panel instead of sunken back a little, like on some of the earlier AMT releases. Same here, we've got the hard top for the convertible. Again, nice little hoods, but not for the right body style. It doesn't matter because AMT, of course, was using the same parts tree for a bunch of kits. This time around, I thought I would show you the interior as well as the chassis, uh, just for fun. <laughs> so here we have our interior bucket with a long tab, which will go underneath the, uh, the rear panel of the car. And this little tab will fit into the back. There are some mold marks going on in here. There's our little back. There's no seat in the back, but there are these little compartments here for putting stuff in. Gas tank would be in here somewhere. Well, there it is there, right? To the back of the car. Oh, this would be uh, the spring going up across the top here is what's going on. And then the uh, gas tank in behind. Actually, I am mistaken. This is the gas tank here. This is the spare tire in the back. And these are the straps that would hold the spare tire in. So you unscrew this thing and this swings out of the way or something to that effect. And you bring your tire out through the bottom of the car. There's something, something like that. <laughs> My Corvette owners would know the, the joys of that one. So there's our tub molded in. The interior panels are again soft. You're not getting the nice GM window cranks like these. You only get that in separately molded panels. However, our pedals are correct because this is a standard. So you've got your uh, gas pedal your brake and your clutch on the outside. So unlike some of the cars we've seen before, they have a standard transmission and automatic pedals inside. There's little uh, locks in for our seats and we have the actual parking brake molded in place here. A nice detail on the console and our shift lever would be popping up there. And this is to lock in the um, dashboard. So underneath on our chassis again, there's all our nice components. Looks correct. It's got a nice little rigid perimeter frame in here. And of course our front suspension and whatnot. Turning it this way, there are some buttons and mold marks. Um, you can sand them down a bit just to get this to flip, fit flush. Uh, the mold marks don't seem to make a difference back here. Oh, maybe they do. Yeah. So get this one down nice and flat because it's sitting up. You have a little bit of a crooked interior if you don't do that. So again, nicely done from AMT. Our model kit comes with four gray parts trees. So we're going to take a look at the first two. And these ones are the, the uh, go and flow parts of the car. So we have our suspension, our wheels, our radiator, our firewall, inner aprons, and of course the 350 Chevy, as well as the independent style suspension. Now these wheels here are the stock ones. For the ZR1 option, we have the front wheels with the little grease caps on them, of course, for our spindles and bearings. And then in the back, the wheels are bolted right onto our differential at the back here, rear axle, I should say. And uh, they don't have those center caps in there. So remember those ones go to the back. These are to the front. And here we have the deep dish wheels. 
Uh, <clears throat> there's our front plastic axles. Again, remember to be very careful when gluing them on. Front king pins, the little drive shaft, the front springs, the anti-sway bar, our A arms from underneath, and there's our steering linkages. And then here we have our, oh, that's a tie rod. <laughs> here we have our front, our upper A arms, and then all wheel disc brakes. And there's our radiator, our fan shroud, our inner fender aprons, our firewall, the, I guess, upper differential. And there's the bottom part. Oh, that's the upper, that's the bottom, because we're upside down. There's our shock absorbers, the rear spring going across there. One mono spring, like a Model T, except this is independent style Jaguar type rear suspension. Um, patterned after the Jaguar. There's our exhaust manifolds, radiator hose, intake manifold, the pulleys, the carburetor, the coil. There's the windshield wiper thing. <laughs> our brake master cylinders, the expansion tank, the fan, our 350 Chevy with the, of course, proper suspension or er, transmission on there. Front water pan, starter motor, uh, distributor, oil pan, and our cylinder heads. So let's take a look at the detail on these things. So here you can see how nice and crisp it is on those wheels. They actually look like real wheels. Thank goodness for that. And then there's the rear wheel backs. A little bit of flash in there. Maybe some mold marks. Oh, it looks pretty crisp for that. King pins. You can tell these which ones are the front brakes because it has sort of a T in there. And it's reflected here on those pegs. So again, very nice detail on here. I, I don't know if it's a little bit soft as far as detail goes, but it's still nice that it's all there. Again, very beautiful work. And now looking at our engine and suspension components. Again, nice detail on here. And look at that nice engine. Very good stuff. So now with that out of the way, let's take a look at our final two gray parts trees. And here's our two final parts trees. Now keep in mind, of course, that that interior would have been in here, and the tub, and uh, whatever the other panels were. So there's our dashboard here, and with the little pockets for your maps. The front bucket seats, and the seat backs, the steering wheel, and our uh, steering column. And then here we have our simplified exhaust pipes with the mufflers off the back. So not too much to look at here, but let's just take a look at the dashboard. And that looks like the proper Corvette dashboard of the time, which is very nice. Yeah, there wasn't enough room for a glove box with the way the dashboard, you know, sinks backward. Because, of course, they were giving you room for your knees in here for the taller people. Uh, seats look nice, too. Nice detail on them. So again, this will all go together to make a very nice 70 to 72 Corvette. And now we have my favorite part of all these kits, which of course is the Carome. So here we have a nice little luggage rack detail that I don't think appears in the instruction sheets, but is optional. So there's the bottom frame and this little bar here goes across all these points. Uh, here we have our rear view mirror, side mirror, the tailpipe extensions, the alternator, the um, uh, the grounding thing for the distributor. Um, there is the air cleaner with the paper element. Our valve covers. I do believe the carburetor is there. Shifter level. The front uh, grill with the big turn signals there. Uh, there's our LT1 wheels and the two rear chrome bumpers. So let's bring this up to our camera here. A nice look at the detail on those valve covers. Very nice. There's our chrome grille. And they were going for bigger lights here for better visibility of the car. And then there's our wheels. Again, these are basically shared with the Camaro style wheel. Um, now turning this over, of course, there in the back are some mold marks. So again, scrape them, paint all that black in the back so you don't see it from flipping over the car. 
And again, nice detail. Very well done, very well executed. And here we have our nice glass. Now, uh, you're going to have to figure out which window was which, because again, remember you've got two extra tops in here. But I do believe it's this curved one is for our coupe. So here we have our front windshield and the curved one for the coupe, and these two would be for those other convertible tops, which you won't use. So just maybe clip this off, keep them to the side. You could also paint those tops different, so you could switch them out with your convertibles. And then here we have our red tail lights. So again, nice detail on these, very basic. The tail lights have the little bullet in inside them. I don't know how well you can see that, but they're there. You have to trust me. <laughs> okay, so there we go for glass. And finally, for tires, we have a set of four of the Goodyear Polyglass GT radials, which are accurate for this year of car. Of course, Polyglass tires are uh, bias belted, which was the step just before the radial tire. So instead of the cords underneath the tread going in at 40 or 90 degree angles, like they do now, they would be going in at 45 degree angles and would have been made out of polyglass, uh, basically, fabric. So there we are. Very nicely done. Well, these tires have been around in model kits for a very long time, so we know what they're all about. Finally, we have our decal sheet. Here we have the little 350 air cleaner decal. LT1 black and white stripes. And then we have 1975 North Carolina 70 ZR1 license plates. And then, of course, the 50th anniversary plates for our museum car. So, very nicely done decal sheet. Uh, pretty simplified. Uh, this decal, well, these decals will only go on uh, Corvette, of course, for your license plates. But still, a nice addition for a decal sheet. And here is my 1970 Corvette that I built a very long time ago, back in the 1990s. It was painted with a lacquer green. Um, the paint job is not quite the best. I did wax this before we uh, started our camera rolling. And the problem with some of these kits that I built from a long time ago is that now, like 30, 40 years later, the glue is pretty fragile and some things, when you touch them, they just break off. In this case, it was the rear bumpers here. So I managed to scrape the paint off and glue them back on. I also noticed there is a black mark here. You can see it just behind this quarter panel. And uh, yeah, I don't know where it's from. But at any rate, there's our Corvette. And I'll open up the hood and show you what it looks like underneath. And that completes our look at the Corvette 50th Anniversary 1970 Corvette Coupe. And if you've built this model kit before and want to share it with us, please do so on our Facebook page. Tell us how you like to build this thing, if it went together easily for you, or if you found some challenges that you want to share with the rest of us. And, um, yeah, so I hope you liked my builds of the kit, and that would complete our model review. Well, I sure hope you enjoyed this great review of the 1970 Chevrolet Corvette Coupe. And if you owned one of these, what kind of color would you like to see it? I always build mine with polo white with a red interior, just like in 1953. I was actually building a great big series of these going from 1953 until 2006, I believe it was. But uh, I still got to do that. One car for every year. Anyway. If you love Corvettes, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you're the first to see it. And until next time, everyone, keep that rubber on the road.